I want to show you a, a simple graphic. It's a relationship that's been known in psychology for about 100 years. It's the relationship per, between performance in any domain of skill and uh, well, let's call it stress. Actually, technically, uh, what this is low, this is high. And this axis really uh, assesses levels of stress hormones in the brain, cortisol, adrenaline, and so on. And the relationship is curvilinear. So this is optimal performance. It's a midpoint. You're motivated. You, you're engaged. You're, you're going. So there are some hormones, but not too, too many. This is people who are bored, uh, who are daydreaming. In, in the world of human uh, resources, as they call it, where this is 50%, but at work it's really high, uh, this is when we're at our best. This is the state called flow. And this is a state that's been written about. There was an article in Science, the journal Science, about this state. It was called The Neurobiology of Frazzle. It's being frazzled, OK? So these are also distinct attentional states. The brain circuitry for each of these is very, very different. When we're in flow, this is when our attention is where we want it to be. This is attention at its best. It mobilizes, it allows us to mobilize whatever technical or cognitive skills we may have. So we can work at operate our best, whatever performance skills we have are at their best when we're in the flow state. The flow state, some of you may know, was discovered by a group of researchers at Chicago who asked people from many walks of life, tell us about a time when you were at your best. You outdid yourself. And basketball players, chess champions, neurosurgeons, all described the same phenomenological state. No matter what they were doing, it was a state where, um, well, let me tell you about one of the stories, actually. A neurosurgeon says, I was performing a, an operation. Before I started, I didn't really know uh, if I could do it. But by the end of it, I'd done it beautifully. But then at the end of the surgery, I, I looked around. And there in the corner, there was some rubble. And I said, what happened? And a nurse said, while you were operating, part of the ceiling caved in. But you were so concentrated, you did not notice. Your concentration is 200%, indistractable when you're in a flow state. I hope that story is apocryphal also. Think about it. So in flow, one of the gateways to flow is to pay full attention. So when you amp up concentration skills, which I'm going to talk about in a little bit, it makes flow more accessible. In flow, usually you're challenged to the top of your skill set, whatever it is for that domain. You're also very adaptable. As things change, you change with them. And very important, flow feels good. It's, it's a kind of a quiet joy. You're really uh, digging what you're doing. So f many of the things we do voluntarily in life, the things we choose to do, love to do, are ways to get into some kind of flow or micro flow, as it's called. This state of being bored involves a different part of the brain. And uh, it's a variety of attention. Every variety of attention, like every emotion, has its function. It's when they're out of proportion or out of place, they become a problem. So when you're trying to concentrate, daydreaming and being distracted is a negative. But if you're trying to be creative, for example, it's a positive. The, uh, the annals of science and mathematics are rife with examples of someone who struggled intensely concentrating on a problem couldn't solve it, and then let it go, and the answer came to them in the off time. They're walking on the beach. A famous uh, equation, a soluble equation, a guy had been struggling with it for three, four years. He got the answer as he's getting on a bus. And the reason is, when we're in a kind of open awareness, uh, we have more access to parts of the mind that have more information, that have more life experience, where we can put together two discrete elements that had not been combined before in a unique original way that has a useful application. That's the definition of a creative act. So there's a positive here. It's just when it isn't what we want to be doing that it's a problem. Then there's the frazzle. 
Frazzle is a different attentional state. In Frazzle, our emotional centers have hijacked the prefrontal uh, voluntary attentional centers. When you're upset, the mind is arranged so that whatever is preoccupying you is where your attention goes. And that has a positive function. If you can have constructive worry, you're going to come up with a solution. Usually, interestingly, it's relationship issues. That thing she said to me, why didn't he answer my email? My, whatever, you know, if I were to ask people in a room, we get a thousand examples instantly. We all know what I'm talking about. That's where the mind goes. And when the mind, until we solve that, we can't let go of it. So the negative side of it is what's called rumination, where you go through the tape loops of the worry and you don't get anywhere.